Hey, this is Jeremy James with Lifestyle Real Estate and Lahanna Bonagoski from the Copper and Oak. She tried to bite somebody, so we had to muzzle her a little bit this week. Lahanna, how's it going? It's going really well. What? Really well. Really well, really well. All right, well, I'm glad to see your social distancing. It's gonna be a little difficult thank to, God, to God. sample. Oh, oh, that's nice. We've got, we've got the whole print. So, <laughs> welcome to our bourbon show. Most of you know right now that we don't have a name for our bourbon show, and that's what we're relying on you for. Um, submit your names down below. Tell us what you think we should call our show. She went for Bourbon and the Beast, but I didn't think that was very nice to Lahanna. Um, <laughs> um, so, you're definitely the beast here, Jeremy. So we would love to see what your thoughts are for our show. Um, so we're, we're going to let you guys submit the names, and then we're going to pick what we think are the best names and let you guys vote on what the what we're going to call our show. So we're doing like bi-weekly, which is like every other week rather than twice a week because I can't do that. Um, if you can't drink every Monday at 9 a.m., you're an amateur. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. So um, you've got some some new stuff here going on with Copper and Oak. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit of what we've got going. Okay, speaking of Mr. Graham Jackson, we just got our new rack cards in that the idea of Farm Design for us. I'm heading on the road today to put them in some different visitor centers around and things like that that are pretty close to the bourbon trail just to get people into Copper and Oak. And we've been working on a few new things to draw people in. Fina Whiskey Bar, my favorite that I worked on this week. Well, it was myself and our bar manager, Allison Hall. Our new whiskey flights, we offered four of them. Nice. Yeah, because we had talked a little bit about that last week. Yep. We got it in play. Um, one yeah, of you, them, you're very proud of the names. Yeah, yeah, no, I haven't even told you yet. All right, <laughs> so, so, so here we go. Hang okay, on. Let's, let's see um, Lahanna's creative no. madness at work. <laughs> I got um, so. to get it together because I giggle. Okay, so one is just what it should be. Since we're here in Danville and we're super big wilderness trail fans, what we're trying today, yep. um, we have one called Tour the Wilderness and it has all four of their expressions there. We did bourbon, the high rye bourbon, their weeded six year, and their rye whiskey. Nice. So, Tour the Wilderness. Nice. Um, then we have one that's a really dorky name. It's four different Old Forester expressions, and so it's called Enchanted Forest Er. Enchanted Forest Er. <laughs> yeah, the er. ER You're going to hyphenate the Er. Oh, it does. It says it in caps. Yeah, absolutely. Like it er. has to be obnoxious. Okay. <laughs> so, then we have one called the Whiskey Snob, which is more like that scale whiskeys. And honestly, nice. it's such a great thing for your butt because a lot of people aren't going to go out. You can't just get the bottle of Weller at right. retail price. Yeah. You're paying a huge secondary market. If you can so find it. if you can find it, yeah, you have to jump through hoops. Yep. So you we have a Weller on there, a Weller pot still, um, the Henry McKenna 10, nice. and then Blanton's. And all of those are on there. You can try yeah. for it once and it's not bad yeah. at all. Like I pay for it all day, every day. Those are seriously stand up bourbons. They are. Are you ready yep. for the, the last flight? Yep. That's my that favorite name. Rye the hell not. Rye the hell not, of course. And I'm assuming that's weeded it's bourbons? All it's yeah, all rye. Yeah, yeah, it's all weeded bourbons. <laughs> rye the hell not, Jeremy. No, it's four different rye whiskeys, but they've been flying off the shelf this week. Nice. So anyone who's coming around the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, come here, we will. Copper note. We gotcha. Main Street, Danville. If you hit WTD, just down the road, was it six like miles? Like six miles. Six miles, whatever. You go down there, you, you walk through, you'd be coming out smelling all corn and, and wheat and everything else, you're gonna love it, and then you want it if you're hungry. Copper and Oak, Main Street, right on the corner of Third and Main, just awesome. Well, so we're gonna do, uh, we're doing a twofer today. Today we're doing a twofer of WTD, Wilderness Trail Distillery, because um, like Lahanna said, we are big fans of WTD. Um, I love, I, I just love everything that they've done. I love what they do for the community because they are freaking rock stars. Yeah, um, from the are, people to the product, like I everything. support all of it 100%. We actually had someone in here the other day and they were about to go do the tour and due to the current world climate, the tastings are suspended at the distillery for the time being. So we were like, listen, we have the tour of the wilderness flight here. You can try it here. And so I'm like going over it with them, telling them, like this one's my favorite and this is why and they were like how much should i pay you so this is a hint like pat and shane if y'all are pay watching attention. this pay attention hey pat bro, and shane. unofficial brand ambassador hey, <laughs> we'll work for bourbon we'll work for whiskey <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> so i've been a fan of theirs since they started they were in a little warehouse down just off of fourth street i mean it was 
teeny. You wouldn't, they're like, oh, there's a new wilderness, there's a distillery in town. I'm thinking some great big giant thing, because you know, you think Maker and Woodford and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And they drive me by and I'm like, no, I'm gonna get stabbed if I go in there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was great. And then they moved out on Lebanon Road and that place has exploded, That's not exploded, but it really got huge. Watching no the expansion has been amazing. The other day, um, we were actually out there, I was switching out some wrap parts with the guys in the visitor center. Right. And I was looking, I love it. Kirby's custom signs here in Bangor. He oh. did a lot of our artwork. If you ever visit Copper and Oak, you'll see it on the wall when you're walking in. Our big sign out front. Kirby did all of that. And when I was there the other day, the rig houses now have the wilderness trail going down there. It looks like the so bottle. Cool. Like it's so cool. It looks it, amazing out there. It is so cool. Everybody else is using these, these rig houses that are just black or whatever. And and it's like okay, that's another rig house. These things, you you pull onto the WTD campus. And, and you know you're there. The whole, just pulling in is an experience in and of itself. It is so cool. And then the little cat Cooper is always coming around. Right. They always. like Cooper. Always. So, well, I'll tell you what, we're about bourbon, so let's do some bourbon. Let's think? do it, okay. Um, so we're gonna start with the four year. I just had to buy a new bottle. Um, my, my original release four year has about that much left in it and I'm sentimental and I didn't want to kill it off. So I went down and got me a new bottle of four. You wouldn't share it with me? Uh, not much. Yeah. I can't help it, you killed yours. Um, oh, sorry, Patrick and Shane would be upset pouring with the label not showing. Um, and oh, then, let's do it. And then Lahana, oh, <laughs> and then Lahana, you brought in your open six year. Now, I got my six year as well, but it's unopened, so we'll be doing that. I was so excited for that because they were originally going to release it back in April. Yep. And, and then the like, it's like the 25th, pop. and the world quit turning. So back in June, that was. So we're not going to we're not going to do two ounce pours on a double. Um, tasting today because someone's got to drive home and my daughter McKenna is not quite old enough. Uh, so um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Wilderness Trail Distillery, I believe is a, uh, they, they do a sweet mash. They do. Um, and it's a weeded bourbon. So uh, if you like, if you like Pappies, if you like, uh, if you like Blanton's, if you like Weller. Like the Weller Special you're, Reserve. You're that's probably going to like Wilderness Trail. Um, Wilderness Trail has lately has been getting massive press about being one of the best new bourbons uh, and it is right there with new riff there every single article is like based in new riff in, in WTD they are it's all we have in the bourbon industry like it's honestly really good to it makes oh. me proud to know them and see what they're doing for our community as big as they're getting so right away I'm getting caramels it smells very sweet to me yep I don't get a lot of alcohol burn on the nose yeah. the Duke last week about blew me out Someone said, you don't smell nothing. I was like, yeah, you know, you're probably right because it blew me out as far as the alcohol burn on the nose initially. But this is very approachable. I think this is 100 proof, right? Yeah, 100 proof. It's a little bit of step up from your, from your standard nine. I drink it now. I drink this all the time. I know it smells like cherry. So let me drink it. Mm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I've got vanilla, strong vanilla, and caramel. That's what I'm saying. It's not a sweetness at first. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty dry finish, I feel like. It is a fairly dry finish. It does have some slickness to it. It's not nearly as dry as the Duke was last week. No. It's got some slickness to it, but not really oily. Um, one thing about like the Weller 107, it tends to finish really, really oily. This is close to it, which is why when I first had it, I did a side by side with the Weller, and I was like, you know what, this for you tastes like a tastes like a young Weller 107, mm -hmm. and it really does. So if you like that profile, you're gonna love this because this is this is vanillas, it's caramels, it has some some nice oaky tannins and that dryness in the mouth, and so I really like that about it. Th this but I is, like it because it's different. Like like it has its own. Oh yeah. It, like, what word am I looking? This is what happened when you work at 9 a.m. My book had door. It's like, we're gonna get you a thesaurus. <laughs> and, you know, so we talk about bad jokes, and, and here's here's one of my bad jokes: is it's a shame that there's only one word for thesaurus in the thesaurus, because you know you would think, yeah. See, put on bumps. That was terrible. You're gonna hear my bad joke. Today. All right, let's hear it while, while I take another sip. Try not to make me. Spit Where do you find a dog with no legs? Where do I find a dog with no legs? Right where you left him. <laughs> We do not represent the ASPCA. 
please direct all of the links to Lahanna at just ticked off half our viewers dot com. Oh, it's so bad. I heard that. Oh I heard God. that. It was so bad. So bad. Uh, I have a bunch. No, no, we're not even going to go down that road. Oh God. It is so way. Bad. It is way too early in the day. And oh. I haven't had enough of this. Wait till we go into our sixth year. I have another <laughs> one. I have one somebody told me last night, and I giggled and giggled like a toddler. I love the fruit that you get on the beginning of this. Yep. Are, are you showcasing it? Yeah, I'm looking at the legs. So what I like to do is I like to look at the legs of, of bourbon because I'm a legs man. It's a joke. It doesn't get any better than this. You have to laugh. I was honestly thinking of how pretty this amber color was. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so the legs are after you take a sip or swirl it around the glass, you just watch it streak down the side. And when they're really thick, then you've got more of a like a, a thicker type of body. And this has got good legs to it. It's not a it's not real thick. This is a very, very approachable bourbon. Uh, which is why it's so popular right now. Uh, it is. There's, there's, it's good quality as far as sweetness, mouthfeel, everything is nice, and but it's not thin or, or watery. And um, talking to a lot of people who are in the bourbon world, and, and that's the one thing I've heard over and over. They're like, "It's a four year. It's young." I'm like, yeah. well, what was this? Like? Was it having a back? Um, saying that it's four year, it's young, right. and things of that sort, and they're like, "I really don't think I'll be impressed with it." But most of the feedback that I get back is that they are. To be so young, it's so complex that just knock it out of the park over yep. there. I mean, four years old, they, they were they were doing yeast stuff for, for other distilleries mm -hmm. and, and doing all kinds of stuff. And they said, you know what, let's do this ourselves. Their first product was the Blue Heron Vodka and the Harvest Rum. Um, and so that, cause you know, you gotta get paid while you're waiting four years to sell your first drop of bourbon. Um, and everybody, I, I remember when that first drop of whiskey went into those barrels and we had to start waiting four years for that bourbon, everybody yeah. was like, Alexa, set timer for four years. <laughs> and we all waited. Did and, Alexa even exist then? I have no idea. You're ruining my show. Oh, so I keep up with <laughs> um, So we all waited and we were on sign up list after sign up list. Everybody was like signing up their brother, their cousin, you know, everybody to get on these sign up yeah. lists just to get more bottles because we knew, we knew that what they were going to do was going to be awesome. And seriously, four years, it's it's phenomenal. All right, so this is my first taste of the six. It's and, mine too. Yeah, right. Anybody <laughs> believe that? No, no, no. This is her second bottle. Ladies first. We'll go on then. No, sorry. No. All right, we'll just go ahead and put extra on that. And okay, look at that, I oh my God, look at that. I, I did a pour with the label facing me. Sorry, guys. You're honestly going to fail your this Monday. How does that it's make so you feel? It's that? Monday. So. It's Monday. It's Monday. Right, uh, so. Losers make excuses, Jeremy. Winners make money. There are reasons. Oh, look at that. You swirl this around, and it coats the glass. Oh, smell this, please. It's immediate, like the stone fruit, the... The alcohol oh. burn is is definitely prominent on this oh. one. It's more than the other. What's what's our proof on this? One hundred as well. Is it still hundred? Mm -hmm. I think you're going to be really impressed. I may know a guy or two, and I may have tried it back in. I don't remember what month. Yeah. And when that happened, it was really funny. I was actually heading home, and my friend was like, "Okay, we're going to like finish up the tasting notes on the sixth year." And I like you turned right middle of like some that. Ready to go. Give me your thoughts. You can taste the extra time with the oak. That is probably my biggest profile difference between the four and the six is the, it's lost the dessert quality that the four year has. And it's really gotten more complex with that, that time and barrel with the oak and the chart. Never really until the sixth year did I get a lot of the leather taste from different whiskeys. Right. And this one's there, 110%. I taste like pecans, the leather. It's good. Yeah. I love seeing your face because this is an actual blind tasting for you. This is blind. I've never tasted the sixth year. And you're right, I'm getting that leather. And it's got a long finish. Again, it's, it's dry. 
It's not oily. Um, the mouthfeel is good. It's a medium body type of mouthfeel. My mouth is still, I can still feel it. I mean, even now, the, 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 the finish is very long. But it's not but a hot finish. No, all. no, it's not blowing me it's out. It's on the sweeter end for sure. It's definitely not like a barrel proof or anything like that. Um, it is, this is very high quality. But it has lost that, um, well, I won't say lost. It has gained complexity and moved away from the more dessert quality. Yeah. Because this, the four year is definitely a, a, a sweeter bourbon, mm -hmm. um, much more approachable for like a beginner palate. Right. Um, not to say it's for whips or anything like that. Don't hear me. Anybody that hate it. I, 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 have you found people that love whiskey so much they hate it? And they hate on that. I've heard people who are like, you put ice in it, you drink it. I'm just like, drink it Whatever. however you want it. Uh, but yeah, you drink bourbon the way you want it. Me like too. if I get a bourbon that's way too big, way too hot, like I had um, Colonel Taylor barrel for one time. I took my first sip, burnt my tongue. I mean, it, you can feel it. You know, you like sip of hot coffee and it like singes your tongue. Yeah, that's what my tongue felt like. That's, I'm like, oh, we need to step that down. Macaulay and I just did that. Macaulay is the guy. He a lot of you probably know, especially if you're familiar with Logan Stroud. Um, he does their barrel pick program. The guy is a master taster. He knows his stuff. And we did a, an Elijah Craig barrel proof a few weeks ago. It was so funny because Macaulay takes a sip, he hands the glass over, and I'm like, what do you think? And he's like, taste it. And I was like, okay. So I tasted it. And I was like, my lip, my lip. Right, <laughs> but it, right. And I think it was like the new, the new release. It's like 136.6 proof. And so he was like, it's really good, but I couldn't tell you what I thought because my lip right it's now. Burnt. And, and that's where I say, you know, when I first started drinking bourbon, it was always with the big cube, you know, because macho guys, you take just the biggest cube you can find and you shove it down on the smallest glass you can find. And what I found was that I was racing the ice cube. And my first sip would be great because it would have just enough of that water from that melted cube to loosen up the bourbon to where I could actually taste it. Yeah. By the last, I'm sipping bourbon flavored water. And so what I found, is an eyedropper full of filtered water just if it's too big it's too hot just killing it right out yeah take an eyedropper full of filtered water just put a little bit of squirt in the glass loosen that bourbon up a little bit and then what's nice is you're not racing the ice cube it does you can have a consistent bourbon all the way through that glass that is palatable for you because everybody's palate's different i mean like we talked about last time Completely. I, can, I can give you a rating thumbs up thumbs down nine one through ten whatever but it's not going to mean anything to you because you have to taste it yourself. And that's why I like having Lahan on here because she's got experience with bourbon. I'm not saying she drinks a lot. I'm just saying that she has experience with bourbon. And we get to, we get to reflect on each other. My husband just, literally banned me from buying more whiskey this week. So by oh, the time he- not going to listen. No, listen, by the time he you watches this, this, I will already have my two new barrel picks and I'll okay. stick them in the back of the closet. It's fine. Talking about that, adding the water, I feel like it brings out a lot more, like the aroma. Yep. Last week, I added just a touch of water to a raw whiskey that we had, and everything that I was trying to smell and the, to differentiate between the scents, it brought it out so yep. much more. And the thing is, I'm never a water and raw whiskey type of person, right. but it's insane how the little variables like that change the game yeah. completely. Yeah, and people are. I Again, you get the macho and they're like, oh, I never remember what. And it's like, you know what? Stop. You just tell them, I remember my first whiskey too. That's yeah. what I said. Too. So, so we've got a hundred. So we've got a hundred and twenty proof. If you've got a huge bourbon like that and it's really killing you, do you know how they get it to ninety? Guess what? Water. It's not why they drop it down. That's how they get it to ninety or hundred or whatever else because they're they're killing that down so that it's approachable and so they can bottle more of it. But. When, when we start looking at that and you start saying, well, you can't put water in your whiskey, stop it. Stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> I mean, stop hating on folks. Everybody comes in at their own place. If you've been drinking bourbon forever and you can drink 120 without even without even batting an eye and, and not getting a, a bourbon professional. Yeah, whatever. I mean, that's fine. It is probably not the bourbon. I mean, the same thing with probably not the bourbon review show for you. Um, <laughs> you drink how you want it. Take a little bit of that filtered water, put it in there, just loosen it up a little bit, and you would be surprised how far that goes. It really does amazing. You like it with an ice cube? Do ice cube. If you pour it in a coke, pour it um, in coke. Hey, when I tailgate all day, I definitely oh. do some ginger ale in there because 
Lord knows I can't cheer for the UK Cats football, out which is why I drink so much whiskey. But we're getting so much better. <laughs> we're getting so much better. But if that's we get a boy, but you know. So much. Yeah. And I, I mix my bar with ginger ale those days. Granted, I'm not mixing blankets with it. Right, right. Nice entry level, $12, $14. Yeah. Get the flavor. That's you know, go. So, so, yeah. So, I, all right. So tell me overall what you think about six. Um, I'll tell you what, let's let's start with four. Um, very dessert quality for me. Mm -hmm. um, very sweet, very approachable, very drinkable. Right away. I mean, it's it's a reason it's my go-to um, for folks who want to come over. I get to talk about local stuff because you know I'm I'm a bit like that. Uh, and I, I love highly recommend it to anyone who is new in the game yep, just because uh, it's sweeter. It's on the yep, sweeter end. Right. It's a weeded bourbon. It's a it's a weeded bourbon. Sweet Which man. both are, but you know what I mean. It's a younger right. weeded. It's yeah. And, and it, it does, it stands up and it's, it's got great quality to it, which is why it's so popular. Um, the the six year, I love the six year. I love what that two years has done to it yeah. because it has added the complexity a, is a, a whole level of complexity. For me, it is very much more oaky and charry than, than the four and that's that two years. Now I can't wait to see this in another year because I'm gonna be calling Patrick and Jane up and getting me in there uh, to, to do a little bit of sipping in a year because that will put it in a well over 107 because well over 107 is involved in seven years. So I want to see where it's at in a year. And I'm that's excited. that's total bourbon snobbery right there. But no, that's, that's what in I'm general, I'm excited for the future of bourbon I am too. Oh my gosh. Like can you imagine when they start doing 12s? Listen. Well and that's and that's what I tell everybody that's not a joke. My daily like my go to whiskey that I, I sell to people, I tell them all the time, is their small batch, their black label. It's their high raw bourbon. I love it. Yep. That's my go-to. So I can't wait to watch these whiskeys get a little bit more age on them, then see what we're dealing with. Yeah. So it's going to be incredible. I, I love what Wilderness Trail is, is doing. They are doing their own stuff. It's their own game. They have gone from the ground up and they have produced a high quality product. I'm telling you, they can't get enough praise. Um, the problem is that the more praise they get, the more we shout them out, the harder it's going to be. Uh, Listen. We better always find this whiskey. <laughs> I'll be banging on Shane and Patrick's door going, hey, hey, leave my bird. Anyway. Can I tell my last joke? I told you I had to. I swear I told you before this started I had to. Right. This is really bad. It's so bad. <laughs> our sous chef last night, Colton, we were all telling our dorky jokes. <laughs> and said, why did the chicken cross the road? Why? Because. And on that note, in two weeks, we'll see you all. Good Lord, I'm going to let her continue. I'm going to let her laugh us out. We don't know what we're going to try yet. If you've got a recommendation for us, hit us up. Let us know what you want to see. I'm thinking kind of new riff. Uh, because it's, Ooh, the new riff single bear. Have you had it? Uh, oh, maybe so too we might do, but we could do a side by side new riff and new riff bear for the single barrel. So These side by sides, listen, my husband's going to be like, Mondays are for the like, and you're already toasty at 10 a.m. That's right. But I'm into it. Pre-gaming. Pre-gaming. <laughs> All right. So, y'all, thank you again for joining us on the as-of-yet named bourbon tasting show. With I'm telling you, I really want to go to bourbon and the beast. You let us know what you think. All right? <laughs> We're going to let you name our show. Nothing dirty. Might be some innuendo. I don't care. Whatever. Just keep it clean. All right? Kid show. Bye, guys. Whatever. See you all in two weeks. Bye-bye.